the golden ratio and the resulting golden spiral, the internet's favorite conspiracy number theory. These infamous mathematical concepts arise from a very specific sequence of progressive squares where the side length of a given square is the sum of the previous two squares' own side lengths. When drawn in a specific pattern, a very interesting shape pattern emerges. So what? There are hundreds of books, papers, YouTube videos that will tell you about how amazing this pattern is, why it's everything from the definition of a snail shell to the governing force of the entire universe. You can go as far down the nonsense rabbit hole as you want. As soon as you discard scientific rigor, you're no longer a mathematician. You're a numerologist. There are an infinite number of sequences that can approach this ratio, but no sequence of integers can ever achieve it. You know, like the Fibonacci sequence? One plus one what equals two? Two what plus one what equals three? Let's look at the golden ratio from an algebraic point of view. There's actually a very simple and discrete algebraic solution to the golden ratio, and it is easily demonstrated with these equations. But what if we ignore this constraint of numbers and integers and instead look at this entire problem from a purely geometric point of view? I think that geometry is the dynamics of too many parts to count. And um, <laughs> when there are no infinities, if there were two infinities, you would be running into contradictions. We'll start by drawing a square, then another square. The third square will have a side length equal to the sum of the previous two side lengths. If we continue to draw increasing squares following this rule, a familiar pattern starts to quickly emerge. Here I'm drawing this sketch using a parametric constraint solver inside of Fusion 360, a parametric CAD tool. So I'm letting the software basically compute valid solutions based on the constraints I apply. I'm going to choose an arbitrary side length and give it a value of one inch. This is simply to just constrain the solution space uh, for the solver inside of the software for all of the geometry. It could be one inch, it could be one centimeter, one meter, one furlong, it doesn't even matter. It's just to give us some sort of reference point to start this pattern from. And so you can see as I draw additional squares, I'm never explicitly defining any of the links. Rather, I'm just using all of these constraints to enforce these conditions. Where it gets more interesting, if instead of going larger, we go smaller. So let's go into this little rectangular gap here and Instead, we'll just keep making new squares. So all we have to do is take the rectangle and then square it off based on the one side that's already predetermined by the rectangle that's larger than it. And if we keep doing this, you can see that every time we add a new square into the gap, we're effectively reducing the amount of play or the potential range of solutions that can satisfy the overall requirements of the now many, many squares in this system. And as we continue to make the gap smaller and smaller and smaller by continuing to define a square that fills it following our rules and continuing to spiral inwards, the uh, size of the gap essentially determines the range of sizes that all of the squares can get. And as we go way back out to the larger squares, we can see that the ratio is obviously approaching the golden ratio within this tolerance of basically how small have we defined our small square. And so we can see that this is like essentially a graphical description of infinite descent, but we can also see that it's converging to a single value. And again, this convergence would represent the discrete solution to the original uh, algebraic representation. Yeah, so basically a limit means that something is behaving pretty much the same uh, if you make the number larger. Mm -hmm. Right? Because it's converging to a certain value, and at some point the difference becomes negligible, and you can no longer measure it. So what if we follow the same basic pattern of drawing squares and continuing to go plus x, plus y, minus x, minus y? Let's extend that concept into three dimensions, and we'll construct a sequence of cubes based on the same principle, the same sort of algebraic definition that the next generation equals the previous two generations. Uh, but we're going to extend it into 3D. And to do this, we can follow a similar sequence of placing these cubes by following plus X, plus Y, plus Z, minus X, minus Y, minus Z. And we will come up with the following pattern. So let's begin to construct this sequence of cubes. And you can see quickly a pattern emerging, and it's rather elegant three-dimensional spiral. 
uh, as we continue to add cubes, you can see that the pattern is starting to like repeat on itself, even though it never self intersects. And I really think that there's a lot of other interesting observations to be made in this pattern beyond the ones I'm about to show because it is really elegant. But let's go ahead and look at the first kind of crazy thing that I found in this pattern, which is if we follow the same principle of the two-dimensional version and we connect a curve between the points at which the squares intersect, and we do that in 3D, let's create a curve that intersects where the cubes connect to each other. And so we can draw this curve and it looks pretty interesting, right? Like, what? Uh, and it also looks like it lies in a plane. And that was a really crazy to me. So if we turn and we realize that it is in a plane and we cut the model in that plane, what in the what? That is not, I mean, what? You get a plane through the curve of those points perfectly bisects every single cube in the pattern and your result is this golden triangle shape. I've seen some reference material on this and there is references to this golden triangle uh, pattern. But so if we actually look at this, just this curve and the triangles, you can see all kinds of crazy geometry. It's like a perfect logarithmic spiral with a growth of phi everything repeats every six cycles right so every six cubes we've essentially got back to the same transform of the first one so you can also see that represented here in the triangles that basically every six triangles on the seventh one is similar to the first and if we start to like draw out some construction geometry we can see that it kind of perfectly uh, repeats and is perfectly symmetric and then drawing these sort of spokes outwards from the center actually gives us the true perfect center of the entire pattern. So even though this pattern represents sort of a theoretical infinite descent and no matter how small the cubes get, there would always be a gap in which to create a new cube there is a one-dimensional point that represents the true center that this pattern converges on. So anyways, if you're still watching this video, then maybe I'm not crazy. Maybe this is interesting. I seriously can't tell. It seems really interesting to me. It seems like something I've never seen. But again, there are still layers of crazy in which we will go. So it all looks really good and it's a really cool pattern. But it also is like, it's a little unsettling, right? Like it's like all this empty space that looks like it could be filled in. So when we have the 2D version, not only does it follow the pattern, but it also is constantly covering itself, right? There's no, there's one, one gap, the very center, but in 3D, you know, we have all this empty space and with a little bit of, you know, trial and error and playing around and realize that it's because this spiral can extend in a lot of different directions simultaneously. So instead of just looking at the single spiral of curves, let's think about this 3D pattern in more of a quote unquote natural way <clears throat> in the sense that one generation, if you will, is determined by the previous two generations, not exactly the side length, right? So let's go down to a single cube and we will construct the last generation and then the two generations ago. And you can see these shapes and it's kind of obvious how, you know, one of the, the larger little gap, I'll call it a gap, uh, could be, would have contain the other two previous generations. But as we build it up, you'll see how that all comes together. So two of the last generation and one of the previous two generations represented as these sort of transparent quote unquote gaps. I'm going to call them gap n minus one and gap n minus two. Now start to build this up. So you can see as I start to build it up, I say, okay, well, in the next generation, I have two of those and one of the previous, and then take that entire set. I have two of those, one of the prior, and it just keeps building. And you can see it's filling in the gap as we build. And it 
perfectly fills in the gap. And this pattern to me is so elegant and so perfect, it still completely blows my mind when I look at it. Like I still can't even really believe that I haven't seen this before. I don't know if it's because I'm dumb. I don't know if it's because I don't know how to use Google. I don't know if it's because I don't know why. This just seems like such a fundamentally interesting pattern of 3D shapes. We can do the same thing that we did in the original model and we can cut the entire model on the plane that sort of defines that curve. And really you can actually cut this in any plane that you want. As long as you cut it through three points of any cube where the one of the points is sort of an intersection point, it will always bisect every curve that, or every cube that it comes through. And you will always end up with a view of nothing but perfect equilateral triangles whose sides are the diagonal of the cubes. I mean, this pattern is, again, to me, is just, it's so elegant and it's so perfect, it's so symmetric. This entire thing is just, the symmetry in here is insane. Let's say instead of trying to build up the rectangular cube, if you will, the brick, the kind of golden brick where everything looks like a golden rectangle, we actually kind of go the other direction and we start from a cube and we fill the cube. So you actually end up with, instead of two of those kind of end caps, you end up with three of them and you can see how there's this extra bit that all starts to fill in and it just becomes even more kind of perfect as it fills in the gaps. You take that like symmetric filled pattern again, perfectly symmetric in every direction I can see nothing, no, cu no cubes of the same generation ever share the same face. They only ever intersect at corners. And then you do the cut. I mean, look at that. That's just beautiful. If you look, I think that shape is so perfect. I don't even know. It should be like a logo of a company or something like that. It looks so awesome. Well, that's the end. I hope I have sufficiently blown your mind. I came across an initial version of this pattern roughly a year ago after having binged some three blue, one brown and Mythologer videos one uh, very exciting Friday night by myself. And uh, since then, in various uh, weekends of time lost, I've... I continue to refine the pattern to kind of get that growth pattern, like just perfectly symmetric. And every time I get into this thing, it's like I end up losing so much time. I go down all these different tangents. Uh, the number of uh, cubes in the model just grows exponentially. So then it's like the computer, just getting the computer to be able to be set up in a way to handle these giant models and all of that. I don't know. It's been kind of a journey. I decided to put this video finally together for a summer of uh, math explainers. Uh, and I hope it was interesting. Maybe it wasn't interesting. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe this isn't even interesting. I don't know. But I think there's probably a lot of more like really interesting facts to be discovered in this pattern or weird observations to be discovered in this pattern. Um, love to hear from anybody who sees it, or maybe I just spent so much time looking at it that I think it's interesting and it's actually not. Who knows? Anyways, thanks for watching.